Today we're playing Pokemon Infinite Fusion, a game where you can fuse any two Pokemon together creating new Pokemon that can be goofy, majestic, or even horrifying. We're going to be taking on this entire game using only grass type Pokemon. No matter what fusions I create, they need to have the grass typing, so I should have plenty of cool fusions to use, but it won't be easy. In this game, any two Pokemon can fuse together, but as you can see there are green and gray fusions. Green fusions are one of the 70,000 custom sprites made by the community, their link will be down in the bio, while the gray fusions are randomized sprites made by a generator that we'll be avoiding in this series because they look kind of funny. With that out of the way, let's jump into the video. Don't forget to subscribe as we're going to be making a ton more amazing content just like this. Also, let's try to smash 1,628 likes. As with every good Pokemon adventure, we start by choosing our starters. In this game, we choose from the original Kanto starters. As we're doing a grass run, we choose my personal favorite, Bulbasaur. Our rival, who we named Brad, takes the other starters and fuses them together. To spice things up in this playthrough, we randomized both wild encounters as well as trainers, so Brad, funny enough, ended up having a Bulbasaur Chikorita fusion to start. It is truly looking like a grass playthrough, isn't it? After an easy win, we headed to Viridian City, grabbed the parcel for Professor Oak as well as some DNA splicers so that we can begin our fusion fun. After giving Professor Oak his parcel, he gives us some Pokeballs so that we can catch our first Pokemon to fuse with our starter. We catch a Hoodoo on Route 1 to fuse it, creating this adorable Hootsore. We also happen to find a Chikorita in the first route and fuse it with a Pukamuku that we received from someone as a gift from the Pokemon. Continuing on our way through Viridian Forest, we ended up catching a Paris and fused it briefly with a Slugma, as well as catching a Hopip and an Execute. After making it to Pewter City, I wanted to try out a few new fusions, so we ended up fusing our Bulbasaur with a Slugma into Slugsaur, as well as our Chikorita with a Fletchling. Execute ended up being fused with a Diglett and Paris with Pukamuku. With my newly formed team ready to go, it was time to face off against the first gym leader, Brock. This game only allows you to bring as many Pokemon as the gym leader has, so I was only able to bring two Pokemon. Since I didn't know what Pokemon he had been randomized into, I brought Pucarus and Slugsaur for maximum damage coverage. His first Pokemon, Wooyu, the Wooper Staryu fusion, went down easily with two absorbs. His second Pokemon, Sunchu, wasn't too difficult either, but I switched out just before my Pokemon fainted to finish it off with Slugsaur, winning me my first gym badge. After winning gym battles in this game, you're given a Wonder Trade ticket to use at Pokemon Centers, but after using my first one to trade for this monstrosity called Hapra, I never ended up doing it again, so we'll just forget about those tickets. As we continued forward on our journey, we find that a bunch of people's Pokemon had been stolen at Mount Moon. Brock comes to aid the injured and sends us in to deal with the bullies in the cave. We quickly find out that it was Team Rocket, and while fighting them on my way through the cave, our Slugsaur evolved into, well, Slugsaur, but now it was Ivy Store instead of Bulbasaur, and well, you get the point. At the end of Mount Moon, we find Giovanni with his gang trying to fuse three Pokemon together in some plot to make an even stronger fused Pokemon. Just as we step forward to end their plans, they send a scientist they'd captured to attack us. After easily beating the poor bystander, the experiment runs into some issues and they flee, leaving everything behind. Having delayed Team Rocket's plans, we continued on to Cerulean City, where we fused our recently caught Pharaoh Seed with a Bagon to create one of my favorite fusions of the run, Pharaogon. We also fused our recently evolved Bayleaf with this Totodile that we caught, and the fusion looks absolutely amazing. Our rival Brad was waiting for us on Nugget Bridge with a supposedly stronger team. His Wizreap did massive damage to our Pharaogon and eventually knocked it out, but Slugsaur made quick work of it. His next Pokemon, Kachoke and Hop Dude, also went down even though they were clearly muscular gym bros. His starter, Bulbleaf, also went down to a few incinerates and we sent him packing. Reaching the end of the route, we find Bill in his lighthouse trying to fuse himself together with a Rhydon. We end up having to help him unfuse and he gives us his SSN ticket as a show of gratitude. Or maybe it was because he doesn't like social events and for that, I can't really blame him. With our new ticket now in hand, we headed down to the SSN, but first we needed to stop by Misty's gym to grab our second badge. Unfortunately, her Flexio was too strong for us at the moment, so we had to do a quick grind session where we evolved Toto Leaf into Croco Leaf, and with our new powerhouse, we took out Misty's Flexio, and we easily finished off her Abtic with Slugsaur, earning us our second badge. During our grind session, we also caught ourselves some new Pokemon, including Budu and Shroomish, which we will use later, but not at the moment. 
On the SSN, we once again faced our rival Brad, and once again he was no match for our Farragon and Slugsaur. They easily handled this team, and we were able to pick up the cut HM from the captain to make our way into the third gym. In the third gym fight, we led with Farragon, taking out his Fartley and Chargy with a rollout combo. Then Farragon goes down to his Absol Glade Fusion. Slugsaur also falls, but not before leaving his Pokemon burned, which allowed our Crocoleaf to finish him off, adding one more to our badge collection. We then caught ourselves a Bellsprout, evolved our Crocoleaf into Ferroleaf, and then quickly into Feranium. Our Exalit evolved into Eggs Trio, and Farragon evolved into, well, Farragon again. With our third gym badge in hand, I decided it was time to change up the team with more awesome fusions, so we headed back to the Pokemon Center, where I fused Breloom with Blastoise, as well as looked for a new fusion for Meganium. While there were many incredible options, I ended up choosing Mega Blade, the Dublade fusion. I also evolved Ivasaur and fused him with a recently caught Infernape to create one of my favorite fusions of the run, Infersaur. With our team newly polished, we headed to the Pokemon Tower where we ran into our rival Brad once again. Leading with his amazing fusion, Aegechu, we traded blows until Farragon finally took him out, though we quickly switched ourselves when faced with Arcazard. Fire is definitely not something our Grass Steel type could handle. We send in Bray Toys and unfortunately get burned, so we have to switch out to avoid getting knocked out. Luckily, a few takedowns from Infersor takes him out, leaving the rest of his team easily defeatable with a couple of flame wheels. After our battle, Brad and I saw a conversation between an old man and Team Rocket discussing a Master Ball they wanted him to make for them. They proceeded up the tower, and unfortunately without a Sylph Scope we couldn't progress, so it was time to head to Celadon City. Once we reached Celadon, we stopped by the department store to buy some Evolution Stones and Evolve Egg Trio. We also traded someone for this Electabuzz and fused it with our Parasect to create a truly terrifying Pokemon, Parabuzz. Now just as a disclaimer, I did not realize until quite a bit later that Parabuzz lost his grass typing and was actually Bug Electric, so I do apologize for this oversight and he was on the team for a short while. Speaking of oversight, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, as only 1% of my viewers are currently subscribed, and as a new channel, your guys' support means the world to me. As we headed to the next gym, we find Erica outside the sewers. I mentioned that the old man had been captured, and she rushed off into the sewers after Team Rocket beckoning me to follow. We teamed up, cleaned out the place of Team Rocket goons, and met at the end. Erica was defeated by Giovanni, which left me to fight him alone on his way out. We lead our imposter Parabuzz against his Porytom who's defeated easily. His Honduros quickly knocks out Parabuzz but falls equally as fast as some Razor Leaves from Infersor. His final Pokemon Joltales knocks out Eggtrio but is easily finished off by Mega Blade. Giovanni admits defeat and flees leaving his Sylph Scope behind. As she leaves, Erica tells us to come by her gym sometime so without hesitation or any preparation we head straight to fight her. Her Pseudosaur gives us some issues, and it does take us three attempts to finally take it down with Braytoys using Aqua Tail, while surviving on just 2 HP. Our Braytoys then goes down to Electurn, and we send out our Imposter Buzz for an easy Spore Thunder Punch knockout for her final Pokemon, including this awesome Pikachu Rayquaza fusion. With four Gym Badges in hand, we head back to the Pokemon Tower. Mr. Fuji awaits at the top and gives us a Poke Flute, which helps us then later move the Sleeping Snorlax. After the Sleeping Snorlax was moved, Jasmine mentions that Koga awaits as the next gym leader, so we quickly make our way to Fuchsia City. We stumble through some invisible walls in this maze and take on the ninja-themed gym leader. Koga leads with Venomar, staying true to his Poison-type gym as it originally was. He then immediately knocks out Farragon with a Sludge Wave, we send out Mega Blade, who barely knocks him out with a couple aerial aces, then Mega Blade falls to Victrelix. Infersor barely takes out Victrelix with a couple of flame wheels, and we do snag a burn on Bespoke, allowing us to survive a Zen Headbutt. But as Koga sends out his final Pokemon, Malor, we get unlucky with a miss and it's lights out. It was then that I realized I only brought three Pokemon to a four Pokemon battle. Well, on to attempt number two. We have a very similar battle leading Mega Blade this time, then Infersor, and finally sending in Buzz to finish off the battle, winning us our fifth gym badge. With that out of the way, it was time to go to the Safari Zone. 
Here we were able to catch a ton of Pokemon, as well as grab the HM for Surf. We even discovered a newly added desert area with a temple to explore. On my second attempt, I was able to make it to the very end where I found Volcarona. Now Volcarona is one of my favorite Pokemon and I was excited to make some fusions with him, but unfortunately I never ended up using any fusions with this Pokemon, but it was still a cool area to explore. With the safari area finished, I headed onward to Silphco to confront Giovanni. The maze of teleporters and doors was somewhat annoying, but we were able to save everyone and make it through just in time to be stopped once again by our rival Brad. He really does have the best timing. Starting off the battle, he leads with Porytomb. We thunder punch our way to victory and are taken down by Sunkiss. Infursor then has no issues flame wheeling and continues to dominate by taking out his next two Pokemon. We then send out Bright Toys to fight his Darkrai Dusclops fusion and are defeated. Mega Blade also falls, leaving Infursor to finish the battle with a flame wheel, remaining the strongest member of my current team. Brad, having lost and like a good sport, heals up my Pokemon and we press forward to face Giovanni once again, this time with the help of our rival. The battle begins with Giovanni leading a Magmar Pinscher Fusion as well as a Pikachu Talonflame. With the help of our rival's Porytom, we take out the Magseer, but Buzz falls to Acrobatics. Thinking that the Mewbone and Pika Flame might both have water weaknesses, we go out into Bray Toys to surf, but are quickly knocked out once again by Acrobatics. We send out Infursaur as things start to get desperate, but they too are one-shot by Acrobatics. My team has a serious flying weakness, which I unfortunately never address. Luckily, we send out Mega Blade as they double into our rival's side, giving us the chance to take out Pika Flame with a Night Slash. Brad then sends out Sunkiss, who is quickly taken out, and Mega Blade is able to defeat Giovanni's Mewbone. Unfortunately, Slowsaw sucker punches Mega Blade into oblivion, forcing us into our non-custom fusion Farragon, who evolved while we were running through Silphco, and we quickly take out Giovanni's final Pokemon, winning the battle. Unfortunately, we were too late, as they had enough Pokeballs to complete their triple fusion plan, and they flee. Luckily, the old man gives us our very own Master Ball, and since I have no idea where Team Rocket went, it was time for our sixth gym badge. We eventually made our way through Sabrina's teleporter gym and headed into battle. Now, I did lead Buzz once again, but don't worry, I do realize my mistake after this battle and we never use another illegal non-grass fusion again. Buzz makes quick work of the slow sect, well, almost. We end up sending out Mega Blade to finish the job. Sabrina then sends out Cloyrodos, but a single Magic Leaf takes it out. Nidonape then comes out, and I thought it would be more problematic as a possible fire poison type, but a super effective aerial ace told me that this fighting type would cause no trouble. Sabrina's final fusion, Dark Drill, was no match for Infersor's Flame Wheel, and this won ourselves our sixth gym badge. Now, it was at this point that I did a lot of grinding, evolving, and catching to bulk up my fusion options going into the next part of the game. And unfortunately, even when we evolved Farragon into Pheromance, he still looked terrible and was not a custom fusion, so it was time to go back to the drawing board and time for a lot of new fusions. By fusing Sceptile with Infernape, we made one of the coolest fusions of the run, Sepnape. We also fused Meganium with Luxray, Venusaur with Swampert to make this Swamp Troll looking Pokemon. Gyarados was fused with Victory Bell, but it doesn't stay that way for long, Breloom with Gardevoir, and finally Ferrothorn with Reuniclus. With the team recap out of the way, we pressed on to the Pokemon Mansion where we were told Blaine, the seventh gym leader, had gone off to. While exploring the mansion, we ran into a Turtwig, which is one of my favorite grass types, so I was super excited to catch it, and we will be using that later. We find Blaine sulking in the basement, talking about something to do with Mewtwo and this mansion, and blah blah blah, go back to your gym so we can battle you. This is exactly what he ended up doing. And it was now time for the seventh gym badge. Blaine leaves off with Quagchan, which poses no threat to our Mega Ray's Thunderfang. Suddenly, he switches out into Darkfrig, his Darkrai Giraffarig fusion that looks amazing. It seems he was trying to set up some nasty plot baton pass as he switched back to Quagchan, but Thunderfang finishes off his already weakened Pokemon. Blaine sends out Executable, and we switch into Sepnape. With a Flame Wheel, we snag a burn, scaring Blaine into switching once again. Unfortunately, he didn't seem to remember Dark Farig was already wounded, and it went down. Execufable comes back out and surprises us with a Psyshock that knocks out our Sepnape. We easily retaliate with Mega Ray using Body Slam, and Blaine's final Pokemon is an adorable Selecue. 
that uses play rough and almost knocks us out. Luckily, we're able to paralyze it with Thunderfang, and we even get two extra turns before Selecu lands another play rough. Luckily, Reunithorn knows Iron Head, and with a single blow, we won the battle. With our seventh gym badge, it was time to make our way to get our final badge. But before this, we find out that Team Rocket had stolen a boat from a local harbor and headed to Mount Ember. With no ships left, we alone had to surf the wild currents, finding our way through a watery maze and traveled to Mount Ember to end Giovanni's plans once and for all. On our way there, we made some last minute changes to the team, including evolving our Turtwig into Torterra, infusing it with our Slacking, making it a physical powerhouse, Torking. We also fused Victory Bell with Tentacruel, creating one of my favorites and final Victory Bell fusion of the run, Victory Cruel. With our team once again upgraded, we headed to Mount Ember, where Giovanni was attempting to fuse the three legendary birds into the manga-inspired Molt Kuno, a three-headed bird that ended up being, hands down, the hardest battle in the entire game for my grass-type team. The battle is already one-sided, with Molt Kuno having three separate health bars, as well as all three heads getting to attack each turn. But to make things even worse for our grass-type team, we were weak to practically everything they had move-wise. Moltres' Flamethrower, Articuno's Freeze Dry, and Zapdos's Air Slash meant that unless our Pokemon outsped, it was a guaranteed knockout without getting an attack in. I lost to this monster of a legendary fusion 37 times, but I was determined to win this battle with the team I'd created. On my 38th attempt, I had come up with a plan that had fully relied on RNG. Leading Mega Ray, I was able to outspeed and body slam the Articuno, hoping to paralyze. Unfortunately, this part did not work out and they were knocked out. It was then that we switched into our other fast Pokemon, Victory Cool, who with a Sludge Wave outsped, did a decent amount of damage to all three heads, and even poisoned Moltres. He was then quickly knocked out and replaced by Venuper our final chance to knock out at least one of the heads and give us a chance at beating them. With Quick Claw equipped, we got the 20% chance to go first with Rock Slide. All three heads had berries to weaken this move's attack, which surprised me because I hadn't hit this move yet in all 37 attempts. We failed to knock out a single head, and I thought it was over. Then, suddenly Zapdos used Charge instead of attacking, and both Moltres and Articuno flinched, which only has a 30% chance per head, meaning it was something like a 9% chance on them both. RNG was on my side. Even with the amazing luck on this battle so far, I knew that my chances were still slim as I had to rely on Quick Claw going off twice in a row, which is only about a 4% chance. And it did. Rock Slide, now not weakened by the berries, was able to knock out both Moltres and Articuno, leaving just Zapdos left to deal with. We finished it off with Rock Slide. Finally, after so many attempts and strategies, the RNG had turned in our favor, defeating Team Rocket's monstrous creation. Giovanni, understandably upset by the events that had unfolded, releases the legendary birds and they unfuse going their separate ways. Team Rocket then runs away, leaving me alone with Moltres. I capture it and head back to the first town we visited to finally face off against the final gym leader. Wait, Giovanni? You know, I never understood why Giovanni was a gym leader, but oh well. Our first battle with Giovanni was actually going well, as we led with Torking against his Umbros. We set up a leech lead and slowly whittled him down, wasting all of Giovanni's full restores. We switch into Venapert against his Ajinx, and with an Earthquake we finish it off. Unfortunately, Giovanni's secret weapon, Mew Milan, easily wiped out my team with Flamethrower and its insanely high special attack stat. On our second attempt, we went in far more prepared, leading once again with Torking, but instead of switching into Venipert, we let him go down so that we could have Venipert fully healed. An earthquake almost takes him out, scaring Giovanni, switching into Talonchomp, who, four times weak to my surf, goes down. Muleon sets up a barrier for some reason, which allowed my Venipert to finish him off, and finally Victory Cruel came in and defeated his final Pokemon, Faratar, winning our 8th and final Gym Badge. With all of the Gym Badges in hand, we headed back to the Pokemon Center to do one big final fusion session. After hours of catching more randomized Pokemon and creating hundreds of fusions, here are some of my favorites. I really love this Talonflame Sceptile fusion, but we didn't need the typing due to this Ho-Oh Meganium fusion that we had created, so we went with this Duskull Sceptile fusion instead. We also fused Torterra with Tyranitar to create a grassy beast like none other. 
By fusing Starmie with Parasect, we created one of my favorite fusions of all time, Starsect. I absolutely love the galaxy and space theme. We kept Victory Cruel and Venipur on the team, and with that, it was time to head for Victory Road. On our way, we bumped into our rival Brad once again. We lead Starsect against his Violetoad, which ends up being an easy matchup with some Giga Drains. We're then faced with the task to defeat the crying emoji meme, which again was not difficult, but funny nonetheless. Swamble comes out and does massive damage with Play Rough, but luckily, Starsick paralyzes it with its ability, slowing it down for an easy knockout on the next turn. Rose Free then comes out and easily goes down to a Sacred Fire from Honium. Girachamp, with his amazing Magikarp belt, goes down to a Petal Dance. With our Honium poisoned and weakened, we switch out into Victory Cruel for the final Pokemon Venu Leaf. Kind of odd he hasn't fully evolved yet, but who am I to judge? Victor Cruel Sludge Waves and our opponent Brad is finished off to a poison. Brad runs ahead and we follow into Victory Road. As nothing else eventful happens on Victory Road, I'll skip to the final fusion on the run. We ended up fusing a Giratina with Roserade from the PC and created one of my favorite fusions of all time, Rose Tina, which we ended up swapping out for our Duskull Sceptile fusion as it was just extremely fragile and it wasn't doing as much damage as I wanted it to. With that, our final team for the Elite Four is complete. We bought some last minute items and headed straight in. Lorelei ends up being fairly easy. Bleeding our Rose Tina, we use Shadow Force to use up all of her full restores and finish off her first Pokemon with Dragon Claw. It's then that we had to switch out to Honium as a Lickister comes in. And I know with a Cloister Fusion, we were about to see an ice move. Sure enough, Ice Crash comes out and we take it pretty well as we go for Petal Dance. Petal Dance takes out both Lickister and Lorelei's next Pokemon, Clefpert. The scary yet adorable Genbi comes out, and we switch into Tortar, our Dark Grass Fusion. With a crunch, Genbi goes down. Lorelei's last Pokemon, Steering, is able to stall us out with Rest and Snore and knocks out Toratar. We send out Rostina and we end the battle with an Earth Power, beating the first Elite Four member. Now it was time for Bruno. Leading with Aegiron, I knew it wouldn't be as easy as Bruno usually is. By using Earth Power, we are able to waste all of his full restores and eventually knock it out. The next Pokemon, Moradactyl, was no issue either using Petal Dance, but by locking us into the move, we doomed Rostina to go down to Bruno's third Pokemon and most threatening fishbowl I'd ever seen, Remogigas. We sent out Starsec to deal with it, and luckily it missed Zen Headbutt, and quickly Bruno swapped out for Wobsire. Still, it was no match for Starsect. Remo Gigas comes back out with a vengeance. Tanking a Hyper Beam, Starsect almost goes down, but is able to barely hold on enough to finish off the armed fishbowl. Starsect, having finished its job, was switched out with Venopert to finish off Bruno's final Pokemon, Rytops. With Bruno out of the way, it was time to see what Agatha had in store for us. Two down, two to go. In this battle, I decided to lead Victor Cruel as we hadn't seen him much in recent battles. I was happy with the lead as Dark Gong would have been trouble for our Garantina fusion. Unfortunately, it did little good as Ice Beam freezes us on our first turn and Victor Cruel goes down to an Aqua Tail. We send in Toratar to Earthquake and seeing how little it does, we try Thunder Fang. This too does less than I expected and after healing a few times, Agatha switches out into Kingion, who Toratar quickly defeats with Thunder Fang. Her Mutorb, while super adorable, took serious damage from Earthquake and for some reason she decided to switch back into Dark Gong. Ice Beam does knock out our Toratar as well as one-shotting Venopert, but luckily Honium is able to come in and pedal dance its way through both Dark Gong and Mutorb's remaining HP. It then unfortunately goes down to a single Stone Edge by Go Gross. We luckily dodge the next one with Rostina and bring it down to 1 HP with pedal dance thanks to Sturdy. Agatha once again makes a questionable switch by bringing out Cloybro, only to be one-shotted, and then uses Double Edge to knock out her own final Pokemon with recoil damage. Not necessarily the best use of the team, but it was a cool team regardless. It was finally time to face off against the final Elite Four member, Lance. Now Lance has always been a fairly tough Elite Four trainer, but I was not quite ready for his team. His first Pokemon, Maratile, went down fairly easy to Venopert's Petal Dance, but I made the fatal mistake to let his Salandril take out two Pokemon in a row with Felstinger. From there, it was an easy sweep through my entire team. 
On attempt two, I led Rostina and was able to pedal dance the Marotile, and then almost made the same mistake of letting my Pokemon go down to Felstinger because I was locked into pedal dance. Luckily, Rostina held on just enough for me to switch out into Honium and take out his Dragon Bee from Hell with a few extra centuries. From there, Lance's Milotar went down easily with a pedal dance, and Starsect was able to put Gliscross to sleep. This nightmare Gliscor Metagross fusion then fell to a few surfs. Juraklang was the final Pokemon of the Elite Four. Starsec did its best by putting it to sleep and then fainted to a future side attack. And though it was weak, Rostina was able to finish it off with Earth Power, defeating the final member of the Elite Four. It was finally time. The final battle. And I will say, it did not go very well. I ended up attempting this battle 16 times, which wasn't nearly as bad as the 37 attempts for Molt Kuno. On attempt 17, I led Honium, with Brave Bird finally defeating the strongest Ponyta of all time, Shendetta, that gave me tons of trouble. I don't know why, but this Pokemon terrorized my party to no end. With that out of the way, we swapped into Rostina to face off against Megrass. Brad quickly switched into Shutrio and set up its sticky webs. A pedal dance later, Shutrio fell and out came a Mega Gyarados. Now for those of you who don't know, Megas are often just made by fusing two of the same Pokemon together. In this case, two Gyarados. After setting up Rain Dance, it knocked out Rostina with a Hurricane, as well as Victor Cruel due to the sticky webs and an unfortunate confusion. Luckily, Honium was able to defeat it with Petal Dance after tanking a Hyper Beam. We then used his next Pokemon's ability against it by turning it into a Grass type and then using Sacred Fire. Unfortunately, it did survive due to the Rain Dance decreasing our Fire Moves damage, but we were lucky enough to burn it before switching into Starsect. After fainting from its burn, Brad finally sent out his starter, Venunium. Starsect unfortunately stood little chance as a water type, and forgetting about sticky webs, I sent in Honium, now too slow to attack before being knocked out. Hoping for a grand finale of starter versus starter, I sent in Venupert, not considering at all its ground type, and it too fell. Our final hope was Torotar. After tanking several solar beams, they were able to knock out the starter, leaving only one Pokemon left, Megrass. With none of my attacks doing significant damage, we were saved by the 35% accuracy of the move Sheer Cold, which missed three times, winning us this battle. Finally, we had beaten Pokemon Infinite Fusion with only grass types, kinda. If you guys would like to see me do another monotype challenge of this game, comment down below and make sure you're subscribed because this is only the beginning of the amazing Pokemon content I have in store for this channel. This has been one of the most fun Pokemon games I have played, especially with all the fusions and custom sprites. If you've watched to the end, comment your favorite fusion from the run. For me, it was probably Starsect, though I do have an inclination towards space and cosmic style fusions. With that, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, share the video with your friends, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.